Tech Design class, how are we doing? So those of you that are set design majors might be wondering, how do I use that template that LeClaire put up? Um, let's take a look at it, okay? I'm going to guide you through how to use it, what to do with it, um, and the different settings it has, because there's a couple of different things that are components that you can shift around, switch, change the configuration of the theater itself to meet the needs of whatever your design is. So stay tuned and we're going to I'm going to share my screen and we'll get to that, okay? All right everybody, here we go. Let's take a look at SketchUp and what we can do with the BTW template that I gave you guys. So when you open it up it looks somewhat like this and everything is a different component so like that's a component and 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 of course that's a component so first thing we're going to do is you guys can use whatever seating arrangement you want if you want this one well go ahead and leave it i don't think i want to use that one so i'm going to move that out of the way as a component it's easy to move and get it out of there um oh it's got this little line attached to it that would be a measurement that I don't need. Say goodbye. Bye. Now, these three are separate. So I could move each one separately if I wanted to and try to place them all in here, but I think I'm gonna take an easier path with that. And I've got this one clicked. Now I'm gonna hit the shift key and you see a little plus and minus sign. So it allows me to put in another one and another one. Now I can move them all at one time. And we're going to put them in right here along that dotted line that I put in earlier before I started up with you guys. And there we go. Okay, cool. So now I've got the audience pretty center because I've got this here and this here. That's a good center point to go with. Um, we know this is 60 feet wide, right? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, I'm going to show you how I do these guidelines. I'm going to now click off of this because I don't want to be on there anymore right now. I'm going to click the tape measure tool and the tape measure tool, which looks like a cute little tape measure. We're going to click on that line and then drag over. Now we know this is a 60 foot span. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually type in 30 feet, enter, and that gives me the dead center line of everything that I need to do. Oh, perfect. Now I also know that it's a 12 foot section of riser. See, if I'm sitting there, it tells me that. So I'm gonna pull this over to six feet. Six feet. And I think we might be a little bit off, but maybe not. Let's orbit and find out. Oh, we are, we're a little bit off. That's one way to find it. The other way to find it is this. I can zoom in on this and I can actually edit the component, hit my right click, edit the component, and I'm gonna put a line right smack in the middle of the component. Now, that's the case, oh, look at these. These are overlapping. I'm gonna have to fix that later. Okay, and let's do that and then get rid of that second line. All right, uh, oof, that's just in the wrong spot. Let's see if I can't fix that right now while I'm at it. No, you know what, I can do that later. So here we go. Let's go ahead and click out of this. Oop, those are overlapping, so why don't we go ahead and let's move those so they're not overlapping anymore, because that just looks awkward and weird. Ugh, now it's overlapping with the other one. That should be okay. Might be overlapping a little bit. Nope, nope, there we go, we got it. All right, cool. So now, oh, look, there it is. Our center mark, right? So, oh, and remember, whatever you do to one component, if you haven't made them unique, it does it to all of them, as seen here where they all have a center mark now. So now what I can do is I can zoom in and I can take this and I can move this whole unit right on that center mark. 
Now I know what's perfectly centered. When we're building this in the space, it's easy to do to find the center mark because we just measure from this side to the center and from that side to the center and we know where we have to be. Also, you can eyeball it in between these two pieces here that just happen to be dead center of the space. Okay, so command center right here, if I'm putting my set on this wall over here, which is where I'm gonna put one right now, this command center is not really facing the right direction. So let's fix that, shall we? Click and hit the rotate tool. I'm gonna to grab the corners and it snaps right into 90 degrees. So you can leave it, whoop, Ah, no, I'm gonna go back here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make anyone dizzy there. There we go, we're gonna move that command center over to here. That's pretty cool. Okay, they can now see what's going on. And if I wanted them to be on a little bit of an angle so they could see even better what's going on, let's take that just like we had it recently in the space. There we go, now we got a little angle. We're probably gonna see things a little bit better. Great. So now I have my space. Yay, space. And now I can start building my set. So for those that are doing set design, this is pretty much what we're doing. You're setting up where your risers go and you know, you've got the full set like that for a proscenium or you can do them and move these individually anywhere around the space you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the most basic shape. I'm going to start with a platform. So I'm just gonna draw a platform right here and we're gonna make that 24 feet wide. Oh, 24 feet comma eight feet. There we go. So now I have a 24 foot by eight foot wide piece. I'm gonna raise that up, but I'm only gonna raise it up two feet. The reason why I'm only gonna raise it up two feet is because one, that's a nice even number for steps at eight inches and that sort of thing. Two, if I have an actor that's particularly tall, eh, our ceiling's kind of short. We know the ceiling's 10 feet, but when you hit the rafters, those are nine feet. And then the lighting grid goes a couple of inches down from that. And if we put anything close to those air conditioners, well, those bottom out at eight foot four inches. So we're not anywhere near the air conditioners where this set is, but we kind of have to still be a little bit careful. So two feet is about as high as I want to go here. Sometimes I kind of squeeze it into 32 inches, but we only put shorter cast members on those. I'm just kidding. Um, because we put taller cast members in it, it's really hard to light. Um, and you know, Mr. Kenoyer doesn't necessarily like when I do that, but hey, these things happen. So there, I've selected this unit and I'm gonna turn it into a component. Yeah, and we're gonna call that riser. All right, so now we have our riser. Yay, riser. The thing is now I can't edit it. Well, if I right click, now I can edit my component again. Here's where we start really working on some stuff. So I'm gonna show you some basics. I think I wanna put a wall on the back of it. So it's 24 feet, so if I look down here, it already says 24 feet, so I know 24 has to come first. So 24 feet, comma, and I'm gonna to wanna to be a standard flat, so I'm gonna do four inches in width. There it is, that's super easy. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift that up so that we end up making the whole platform about, you know, we wanna make it so that maybe we can have a door in there or something. Um, or have things at a reasonable height in case we do have an actor that's like over six feet on that. We wanna make sure that it doesn't look like, you know, they could stick their head over it. So we're gonna make that seven feet high. So here we go. Now we're at seven feet, yay. Okay, next thing. I need stairs to get up here. I showed you already how to make stairs coming out of something, but see this three foot line right here? That line is where my audience's feet are gonna be. So if I were to put stairs coming off the front, because I want stairs coming off the front. If I were to do off the front, guess what? Uh, they're gonna end up hitting the audience and that's just gonna be a trip hazard and it's just not gonna be fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I made this three foot line right now. I'm gonna grab my tape measure. 
I'm going to click and then I'm going to come out and I'm going to put three feet into my little dimensions thing there. Look at that. I've got a three foot measure. Here's why I do that. I can start here and if I get a perfect intersection, if you look down on the dimensions, it's three foot by three foot exactly. So here we go. I'm going to do that again. And oh, there we go. Square. Easy peasy. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a guide off of that guide. It's going to come one foot and guide off of this one. And that'll snap right to one foot. Look at that. It snaps right to one foot. Why are you doing that, Mr. LeClaire? That's easy because if I'm going to make stairs inside something, then I'm going to need stairs. So I take my pencil tool and I draw lines over that. Looky loo. And then I'll take my push pull tool. And so we got to do a little math right now in our head. I know math. It's, it's okay. We're doing algebra. If we have 24 and we need to get to 8, what do we minus out of it? That's our x. Well, that would be 16 inches because 16 plus 8 is 24. So what we're going to do is 16 inches or 1 foot 4 inches, depending on how you want to write it. And we're going to do this one at 16 inches as well. And then we're going to bring this one down only 8 because it's going to go in the middle. Oh, it went too far. Not a big deal. There we go. Fix that by retyping that, which we're going to have to do anyway. Okay, so now I've got three steps leading up, or two steps and then the platform itself. There's a couple things I want to do here to clean up before I keep going. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to eliminate these lines. I don't need those anymore. I've, I've, they've lived their existence. The third thing I'm going to do is I am actually going to draw a line here. because I'm going to separate this platform from this platform, and I'm going to try to get uh, something really cool done in there. Then I can grab my eraser again and I can get rid of that guideline because the guidelines start to get kind of annoying after a while. Okay, cool. So I've got that all set up now. I could leave this like this and, you know, that'd be cool, right? We'd be all set. That's a decent platform. But I want another level because when we're trying to give directors stuff to do, the best thing we can do is make sure that like there's somewhere for an actor here and then an actor can be above or in back of them and we can see different actions happening at different spaces. So let's take this and push it down. It'll offset to eight, but that's not where I want it. I want it offset to that eight. So if you stop and take it patiently, you can bring it past the offset to the next offset. Now, I don't like sloppy things left alone, so that's gonna go. And this is going to go. But I'm going to leave these right here because I have, I have a plan for that later. Okay. So if you were to make a very basic set, and there's nothing wrong with the basic set. In fact, this is kind of cool like this. I like it. Um, this would be it. This would be probably the most basic set you could make. We want to align this, though. So what we're going to do is we are going to make that little midpoint line and look at that we're almost right on it and once we get back out of here we can go ahead and we can move this so the last piece that you need to do after making your set in order for this to really work for your technical director who is the person that has to build it just looking at this white block doesn't tell them anything however if we give them some dimensions then they'll know what to do so go to tools which you can't see that up top, but trust me, it's there. And we're going to hit dimensions, which I just did. I'm going to highlight line by line. That line is 18 feet. That line is, let's bring that. Why is this? This is not having fun. There we go. 24 feet. This line is four foot eight. And this one end point to end point is three feet. Why is this 4 8? Because we have 4 inches taken up with this fl this flat on top of it. So it's really a 5 foot span. So it's not 4 8, but we'll see that in just a minute. Next thing we're going to do is look at the height. So we also need to tell him that's 7 feet high 
and that also is 24 feet in length. We can even do that four inches and tell him that that's four inches. So he zooms in on that and hey, look, there's four inches. He or she, I'm sorry. Um, the staircase, it's three feet wide. Each stair, oh, get back there. Each stair is one foot deep and has a height of eight inches. We don't have to repeat that here if unless we want to. Sometimes it's nice to have the clarification because there are times where you might be doing a unique set design and that unique set design requires you to go ahead and make it so that, oh, that's gonna move. That's not what I wanted to have happen. And that's eight inches, okay. So sometimes unique set design allows us to do different stairs and different configurations, which I will do in just a little bit. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to separate these things out because they're separate pieces in my mind and that's how I've designed them in my head and that's what I want to see. So same over here. So since these are different pieces, I'm going to make this a piece and the line when it goes red or blue, that's on the blue axis or red axis. When it's right on the axes, it turns the color of the axis and you know that you're on a straight line. Um, as opposed to like this where it's, oh, there's my green axis. I don't want it on the green axis because I'm going up and down. And that's the black one, which is just all over the place. All right, so now I've got these that I can do measurements on. So we'll go back to tools. We're gonna hit dimensions and I can go right here to right here and there's that five foot measure I was looking for, right? Then I can take this one and we can get the height of that, which is two feet. This line right here is totally useless and I don't even know why I put it in. So we're gonna get rid of it. Goodbye line. There we go, because that's our platform and that's our flat, all right? So there you have it, a nice basic set of platforms with all the guidelines somebody needs to build it, right? And we forgot one. Where do we forget? Right here, one foot four. We wanna make sure that every single section is done. And if this is times this, then that just has to be a side note that you give your director, your technical director. Alrighty, Rooney Rooney, that's that. So if this is all you really need, that you just wanted to know how to do something basic on SketchUp and have a nice little set going here, this was enough for you. Those of you that are doing a design and you want to learn something a little bit fancier, we're going to do that right now. Just give me a second here to place this. It's not behaving. We'll just take that as it's like an angel off right now. Okay, cool. So if you're sticking around for details, here we go, let's do some details. I'm gonna give you about five or maybe even close to 10 minutes on doing some detail work on this and uh, with some tips and tricks that I've, I've learned over the years on how to get stuff done. So just hang on tight, we're gonna have some fun. So I'm gonna edit the component again because that's where I wanna get to. And then we'll do another lesson when it comes to 3D warehouse and all that fun stuff and how to incorporate all that. But let's get your base sets done right now. So stairs. You'll notice that most stairs have a lip that comes out, right? And what well, the kick plate, which is this, goes back. So we're going to do that. Now, this is one foot. One foot is a nice, easy measurement. And we can make that one foot out of two bys, or we can make it out of three quarter inch plywood. We're gonna say that it's three quarter inch plywood decking. So it's three foot down the bottom here, but right now it's two inches, two and one sixteenths of an inch. That's a bit much. So all I really need is I need five eighths of an inch is the plywood I'm using. So. Since I'm using plywood, I can do something here. One foot's kind of about as far as you wanna go. 
So I'm not going to really change this because it's one foot. What I am going to change is I'm going to push pull the section underneath it. I'm going to push that back about an inch. Just one nice little inch. And what that does is it actually kind of like dresses it up a little bit. Just that simple little function is going to make this set so much better. It's going to look like a totally different thing. It's going to look very, very professional because you're thinking about the details. And that's the whole point. So three foot, comma, five eighths of an inch. And we'll just put this one at the same time. Three foot, comma, five slash eight inch. Great, cool. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to do that push pull here for an solid inch. We're going to bring this back an inch too. Inch. Okay, cool. So now we have this really nice looking clean piece here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil and we're going to finish up those lines so that the person doing the instruction, now look at the hair, this is fun. It stopped me at the end from point outside and then allows me to make that last little point without, you know, doing anything extra. Now, if I really wanted to, I could push these in and have this as a fascia, but we're going to use this. We're just going to do a fascia here of plywood or masonite, and it's just going to be nice and neat. Um, okay, here we go again. I want this to be a separate unit, just like that. And the flat has to be a separate unit too, in case I want to do anything with it. If it's not a separate unit, it'll move everything at one time, which is not preferred. That causes problems. Okay. And there we go. We got our nice three quarter inch pieces there. Grab my orbit tool and let's look at how neat this looks. It looks neat and clean and very professional. Now, how does it look versus the other one? Versus the other one, the other one is, oh, hey, look, we're in a wall. Probably want to orbit a little bit higher than that. The other one is just blocks. Nothing wrong with just blocks, if that's what your aesthetic is, but I'm gonna show you guys a little detail stuff, okay? So right now, what we wanna do is we also want to give a little bit I'm going to have a little fun here. I am also going to do um, a fascia plate on this thing up here. And what that means is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I know that's 18 foot, so all I can do is, I can do this. I'm going to make that 18 foot, comma, Let's say we make it six inches, because six inches is just such a nice, neat little number. So we've got a fascia plate now that's six inches. Well, that's not really a fascia plate. It's just standing there and it's flush. So we're going to pull that out a little bit. And what we are going to pull it out is three quarters of an inch. And why three quarters of an inch? Because three quarters of an inch is the size of a one by. So like I'd get a one by six, might be a little bit thinner than that, but that's what it is. We can go from the end point there to the end point over here. And we've got a nice little thing that tells our technical director, oh, that's another piece of wood that I need. Now, what does that look like from the front? I cast a nice little shadow. And gives us some three dimensions, three dimension, a little bit of depth. Okay. You can get really fancy if you want to. You can have some fun with this. Um, you can make triangles, you can make circles, you can do all sorts of stuff. One of the things that's really fun is to grab a three-point arc. And maybe not a half circle, maybe just a little tiny bit right there. Now, how on earth does that work? Well, all I have to do is I have to push pull it 18 feet. 18 feet. And now I 
I've got something that's not as fun to build, but man, does it look good. I've got that really nice curve going on there. Look at that. That would be super cool, right? I know, I know. I, I think things are cool that you don't, and it doesn't really matter. But you know what? If we don't want it, here we go. Bye. It's not there anymore. We're going to stick with stick with rectangular right now because that's just helpful. Oh, but our our tech director still needs some measurements so that they know what they're doing. Okay, so that's a six inch board. Thank you, tech director. They could also make this with a piece of plywood that's three quarters of an inch thick. Um, we're not going to do one down the bottom right now because we could easily do that. But what I want to show you is I want to show you how to make a window real quick, real easy. So that we can have windows in the back of this. And, you know, we could paint the back wall like whatever sort of scenery we want. And I need my tape measure again. I am going to go for three feet just for fun. And then the next one should snap to three feet if it actually takes it and does it. Nope. Yep, snap to three feet. Great, good. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this and if I bring that too far down, it's not going to be at the right height, right? So we want this, this is a seven foot piece. So we probably only want this about six feet, six inches in. But we have a standard that we have to hit when it comes to how tall the window is off the ground. A window off the ground is anywhere between 28 and 32 inches. We're gonna make it 28 inches just because I wanna be different. So that's two foot, four inches. Now I've got this nice little square here. Perfect. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to make my little rectangle there. And then I'm gonna actually do something fun. I'm gonna go ahead and get in here a little fancy. I'm gonna make this have a six inch molding on top. Oops, too much. And so that's four foot two, which is what it should be by four inches, not four and a quarter. Four and a quarter inch, that'd be bad. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side where we've got four foot two and then four inches. Okay. And then this one's the big one. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this and bring that down. It's three foot eight, but I only want it to be, actually we're gonna do six inches on that one too. So six inches. Great, cool. So now we've got all the components we need for our window, except for these corners up here. Now we've got our corners. All right, so what we want to do is we want to get rid of the window first. Buy window. Oh, wait, we chose the wrong thing. That was weird. And as soon as it's clear, it'll go away. But that's not going away. Why not? Because it's not quite clear yet. Oh, that's not good. Let's reverse that, reverse that. There it is, it's disappeared because I made sure that it was exactly four inches. And I could have easily done that by just going push four inches because we already know that it's a four inch wide piece. And there we go. So this is our base. So we're gonna bring that out quite a bit because that's kind of our windowsill, right? So we want that windowsill to be at least three inches, which is bigger than a normal windowsill, but we want people to see it from where they are in their seats. I'm gonna bring this out three quarters of an inch. Why? Because we wanna build it with plywood because it's cheaper. Three quarters of an inch. 
that one's going to be three quarters of an inch as well. And these guys are actually going to come out one inch. So it'll offset, and then I can bring it out another three quarters of an inch. So now we got an inch and a half. So offset, come out three quarters of an inch. Now you'll notice that we've got another, look at this is a very nice basic window right here. What we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to make, oh, Mr. Leclerc, you just completely, you know, another window. Uh, I wouldn't be so sure about that because I can just do this, select and delete. And there it goes. Bye. So we're all good. No big deal. I could add little details in here if I wanted to. Um, you know, I could make circles in here that look pretty cool and neat. I could make another rectangle in there and push it back and do all sorts of fun things in there. Um, but I'm not going to get into that design, high design stuff right now. What I am going to do is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to make an actual sill on my windowsill. So that's three foot eight by three inches. Well, I want it three foot eight inches by one inch. There we go. And then I can push pull this thing back by one inch. And that'll give that dimension I need for it to be a window cell. Then you can do all sorts of stuff in here. You could actually put a real window in. Um, but you could do really simpler stuff than that. And that's where the 3D warehouse stuff is gonna come in. So we will reapproach this when we get to 3D warehouse, which will be in the next lesson. In the meantime, I um, hope you enjoyed this and we will get back to you in a little while. So have fun and tech on my wonderful friends. We will see you next lesson.